Friends, welcome back to the series. I'm going to keep the MOOCs under 10 minutes if I can, <clears throat> try to explain fundamental probability or statistical concept or scientific concepts under 10 minutes. Let's see if we can this time as well. This is the third, the law of large numbers. What is the law of large numbers? <clears throat> it's not the most important concept in science. It is a necessary law that needs to hold for you to be able to do statistical science. It's also a very important discussion in philosophy, the problem of induction, the black swan problem, is where we have a failure of the law of large number, either to apply in practice, my case, my work, or in principle, Hume. So what is the law of large numbers? Very simple. It tells you that when you have observations x1, x2, and to simplify, let's assume that they come from the same distribution, they're distributed in the same way. Let's also say that they must be independent, but this is not quite necessary, by the way, the independence. Uh, they can be weakly dependent without affecting the result. When you have these numbers, <laughs> You can produce certainty with uncertainty. These are random variables. But the average, 1 over n, the average will be much more stable than the individuals taken separately. So you have a scale transformation. One of the two central scale transformations in statistics the first one is a law of large numbers. The second one is central limit, where under uh, so those the central limit theorems, where under, again, some conditions, if some behaves in a certain way, you can convert to a Gaussian or to another class of distributions. So what's the big deal about it? <laughs> the big deal about it is that you can produce certainty. And let's see how. And also, by the way, this is, applies to portfolio theory. A portfolio is more stable than individual stocks on balance. So let me explain why. Simply here we have x1. Let's take just two, two variables and x2. 0, 1, 0, 1, OK? X1 can take the value 0, 1, X2 is 0, 1, coin tosses. What is uh, the expectation here? Or what is the, 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 the mean? Let's say the probability is P, and let's say it's half to simplify. The average here is 1 half, the average here is 1 half. The average of both will be 1 half. But the, each one will be much more unstable. So here you have the standard deviation p, 1 minus p. What I mean more stable means have a lower standard deviation, to use a language of standard deviation. I prefer to use the concept of mean deviation that we saw last time, mean absolute deviation. Or you can use some other uh, stuff as indicators of uh, stability. Okay, So x2, p, 1 minus p. And of course, the average x1 plus x2 will have four standard deviation p1 minus p square root of 2. Okay? It's going to be lower. It's not going to be half. It's going to be square root of 2. For phenomena in the Gaussian domain, or that eventually end up in the Gaussian domain, this the sum being a something called a binomial distribution. Typically, as you double the number of observation, you lower by square root of two. So let's see why this is important. If you notice, because think about it, you take zero, one, zero, one, the total can be zero. It comes from zero, 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 one, equal one. 1, 0 equals 1, and 1, 1 equals 2. So as you notice, 
they don't they might go in offsetting direction as here in the middle and this offsetting like one of them is higher the other is lower in in that uh, observation is that offsetting that stabilizes it's a fact that things offset washes out as they say noise washes out that's the idea so let's see how things work now again remember science is largely about certainty okay or trying to get to certainty and probability is about uncertainty so i have x1 x taken on its own or x2 taken on its own this is probably distribution as I have the sum, it's going to have n of 1, say n of 10, and you keep going till you get what we call a degenerate distribution where you have n of a zillion. Give you another way to view it. This is n. Okay, and this is, say, the mean deviation or standard deviation. STD or mean deviation, whatever. It starts at one. And if this is for one, you have a drop of as you increase n. And visibly, you know, you will never reach zero when you approach it. The reason, I mean, you can get a reasonably low number. The problem is for many distributions, the fat tail distribution, you don't drop at square root of n. At the rate square root of n. You stay up there, Cauchy. Whether I have five or five trillion, if x1, x2, xn, if they follow the Cauchy distribution, or as a matter of fact, if just one of them follows the Cauchy distribution, even worse, which has no mean, no matter how many you add up, stay the same. You don't get information as you're adding random variables. That is fat tailed. And this is thin tailed. And the difference between the two is what I call the kappa. And I measure the kappa. This is kappa of zero means you're like in the Gaussian world, square root of n. Kappa of one means like in a Cauchy world, you're adding an observation, you, it doesn't produce results. I think I've explained. Uh, rather quickly, the law of large numbers, the stability of sums, why, and, and to repeat, why as you add up random observation under some conditions, you lower your risk or, you know, or you lower uh, your uncertainty, you increase your certainty. <laughs> but that doesn't work under fat tails. Basically, the way I defined <laughs> fat tail is in the slowness or in the non-working of law of large numbers. To give you a very simple anecdote, you've heard of the Pareto 80-20. We'll see it in some, in one of the tutorials. But that's it. So one more thing before I finish. Let me give you a very simple case study to show you that you need a lot more data when you're dealing with a fat tail distribution. Let's take the most commonly known distribution, most commonly discussed by people in the street. Pareto 80-20. They tell you it's an 80-20. Meaning that 80% say of the uh, people uh, own 20% of the land and vice versa. So Pareto 80-20 versus Gaussian. Let's compare to the Gaussian. And let's see how the LNN works. First thing about this law is there, that it doesn't have a variance. So you can't talk about standard deviation. Yeah, talk about mean deviation. So let's match the mean deviation for n of 1. You match the mean deviation for this, these two. You normalize, in other words. And now we're going to see, typically, for a Gaussian after n of 30, you got a drop in standard deviation. People are satisfied with it. It's about what? Square root of 30 is about 5 and 6, between 5 and 6. How much more data do you need for this one? to have the same drop in mean deviation. The, the same stability, the same comfort, the same certainty. How much? Well, when I ask statistician, they typically tell me 30, 40% more. Some venture and say twice as much. My friends, 10 to the 13. You need 10 to the 13 
more observations under this than under that one. So the law of large numbers works, but you, you know, not in real time. So you got to find some other tricks. Anyway, thank you for listening to me and have an excellent day. Bye now.